Ah, hey YouTube, how's it going? Well, here we are in beautiful, sunny New Zealand. Oh wait, no, I'm being rained on. It's been raining now for two weeks solid. In the meantime, we're going to analyse this glider winch launch accident. Now, as you can see, this event happened real fast. We're going to have a look at what went wrong with this accident and what you can do as a pilot to avoid the same mistakes. Stay tuned to see a video of a glider very nearly doing the same thing, but this time getting away with it. All right, let's dive in, shall we, and see what we can learn from this accident. The first major obvious problem is the fact that the wing touched the ground as they were taking off. Generally, we need the wings to remain level at the beginning of the launch. Right at the beginning there, there's not enough wind flow over the wings to give the pilot any control over whether the wings can go up or down. The wings are very balanced. It's like a seesaw. You can lift one wing and move it around quite easily. This is one of the reasons we have a wing runner, to stop the wing dropping before the glider builds up enough speed so the pilot has control over the glider. It's critical they keep the wings level for as long as possible and that usually means running along beside the glider while it's actually taking off. And you just do that as far as you can. By that stage, once the glider's got a bit of uh, speed, there's enough air flowing over the wings that the pilot can then take control. In this case, the wing runner did not hold on for very long. You can see they just took a couple of steps and then let it go without really running. So that may have been a contributing factor to this accident. To be fair, the winch happens very quickly. The acceleration is massive and normally a wing runner can't keep up for very long anyway. But if they're not running, they haven't gone fast enough, I would suggest. So why is the wing touching the ground so dangerous? So glider wings are long. It's kind of their deal. When we're winch launching, the rope is attached very close to the center of gravity of the glider so that it can kite up. You can't use a nose hook because you'll have the rope pulling down on the nose as you're trying to climb. So it just doesn't work. So it's very easy to rotate a glider by its wingtip. And the further away from the center of rotation you are, the easier it becomes. So here's an example of uh, torque in action. If I try and push this door open with my little finger, if I try and do it right next to the hinge here, or near the pivot point, it's incredibly difficult and the door opens really slowly and it requires a lot of energy and my finger hurts a little bit. If I do the same thing but at this end it's much easier. So exactly the same happens with the wing on the glider dragging on the ground. It's a lot easier to turn the glider around when you're dragging right at the wing tip there. Unfortunately the longer the wings the easier it is to make the glider do that rotation. This is the same reason we use long handled spanners. So we can have more effect with the same amount of force by being further away from the point of rotation. Now on a spanner, this is a good thing. However, when it comes to wings dragging on grounds, it's a bad thing. And the longer the wing, the more effective it is to turn a glider by its wingtip. So the other major contributing factor to this accident is the long grass. Generally, you want to avoid launching a glider on long grass for this exact reason. If the wing drops, long grass will grab that wing and provide more force on that wingtip than it would if the grass was short or you're on a paved runway. So here's an example of a glider taking off, scraping the wing on a winch launch, but getting away with it. See how close this glider is to the grass on the right hand side there. And if it was just a bit further over, that would have been a major problem. But because they were launching on the shorter grass, the wing scraped on the ground and it wasn't such a problem. However, in this case, the pilot should have released as soon as they realized that the wing was going near the ground. So this glider only had 15 meter wingspan, which helped also. Another factor may have been the weather. So is there a crosswind in this uh, example? It's a little hard to tell, but you can see the windsock in this video and it's hard to tell if it's a headwind or a little bit of a crosswind or a lot of crosswind. But you can see the clouds moving in the background uh, across the frame. So I'm guessing there was a bit of crosswind. And the problem with a bit of crosswind 
if a wing goes up the wind can get underneath it and keep it up it makes it really difficult if not impossible to get that wing back down with your aileron control so even with all these things going wrong this accident still should not have happened the reason for that is the pilot should have realized what was happening and released the glider from the winch during a winch launch the pilot can pull the release at any point including right at the beginning now to be fair this happens very quickly we're talking mere seconds to identify what's happening make a decision and act on it but it's actually critical that you do that as you can see in this video you really do only have seconds to react this video is part of the training resources and materials from the British Gliding Association so if you want to learn more about how to stay safe while winching check out their links in the description below in this case the pilot just did not release fast enough and you can see when they did release the impact and crash is inevitable at that point if they had released as soon as the wing started dropping and even before it hit the ground it would have probably just done a ground loop flat on the ground so it's critical to make sure that as part of your pre-flight checks you're going over the eventualities of what could happen on the flight and of course there's all the other aspects of winching such as if a rope breaks or anything like that you need to get the nose down fast but what we're focusing on here is the fact you also need to consider how to release from the winch as quickly as possible if at any point a wing starts dropping you also need to have your hand on the release as you can see you have mere seconds to identify what's happening get your hand on the release and pull it so if your hand is already on the release it means you can just instinctively react when you need to you do have to be a little careful not to accidentally pull the release as you're going up the winch due to the g-forces but quite frankly i think this is a lesser problem and less chance of hurting yourself if that were to happen so in conclusion one never launch in a tailwind that takes longer for you to get aileron control two never launch in long grass get out the lawnmower give the area around where you launch a good mow be ready to release this is the most critical you need to prepare yourself so you can react instantly as soon as anything starts going wrong make sure your wing runner knows how to run the wing and actually runs and knows how to hold onto the wing when they're running a wing and finally be very careful in crosswinds okay thanks for watching hope you enjoyed this hope you learned something be sure to check out the links in the description below and be sure to check out our uh, t-shirt and sweatshirt store if you're interested in supporting the channel